What's up guys? Today I thought we'd take a more analytical look at sealed versus ported versus bandpass. So I can show you exactly on a graph what they look like. This will not show an in-car response, but it will show you essentially what the differences are, the gains and benefits, losses to each one of these kinds of sub enclosures. So let's take a look. I removed all the damping from, closure, from the enclosure because we're not trying to get a definite enclosure figured out. We're just trying to figure out what's the difference between the four because I'm going to do sealed, ported, bandpass fourth order, bandpass sixth order. Let's take a look. So I'm going to go in. I'm just going to pick whatever my program suggested enclosure is. I'm not going to design each and every single one, but you get a great representation of what the differences are. This is saying this is just a baseline for bandpass enclosures. Feel free to adjust as you like. <clears throat> I'm going to throw some ports in these guys real quick. I'm going to go with a four inch port on every single one of them just to simplify my life essentially. All right, I'm going to open a graph so you can see the differences. Let me change the colors on these guys so it's easy to tell between each and every one. Now, seal the closure, you're really not going to be able to tell in this graph that it's a snappier box than, say, a port or sealed band pass. You can't really tell that. You can't tell that the vacuum from the box is recentering the cone faster than the other ones can. So, this is a standard sealed box, which they're recommending 1.333 cubic feet. For the 10. Now this is 100 hertz. This essentially is where your base will start most of the time, anywhere from that and down. And your base usually finish about 30 hertz, which is right here. So this part right here is all we're really interested in. Let me throw up the ported box. Throw up the ported box. See all this extra base you're getting here? This is all, so these numbers are in decibels. So we're going to go down to here. We're roughly 6 dB down, not a little bit more, at 40 hertz. 6 dB is literally three times as loud. It's a big loss. Let's throw up the single tune bandpass. It's got a great piece over here. I mean, you're going to play real low, real well. You're going to definitely lose some, lose some volume here. Let's open sixth order. Here's sixth order. Now, granted, both of these can be, all of these can be adjusted. We can recreate these in any way that I, I could possibly think of. You can imagine, you can adjust this stuff in, in a program like this. But these are just their basic setups. Now, if you wanted to do a super low playing box, this would be ideal. Obviously, we have more output on this dual tuned box than we do on any, any of the other ones. Uh, out of all of them, the ideal one for me would have been the ported, but there's more stuff to look at than just this. So one of the first things we need to look at between all four of these boxes is how big is it? So let's go to the sealed box. It's 1.333 cubic feet. It's not bad. Not a lot of space lost. Let's go to the ported box. The ported box is 2.695, so over double the size of the seal box. Granted, we're getting three times the base to get there. It's still a, it's still a really big box. 
Let's go look at the single tune. Single tune band pass box. Timber number one is 1.289, 1.3 essentially, and 0.66. So roughly the same size, maybe a tad bit smaller than the vented box. Let's go to the dual, double tuned. Chamber number one is 4.21 cubic feet. That's a monster, it's a big box. Uh, seal chamber, or actually the secondary chamber, it's not sealed, sorry, is 1.48. So this box is five and a half cubic feet. It's a monster box. Can we change it? Can we make it smaller? Yeah, we can. But this is just a basic look at what the differences are. So another thing I've taken to factor is, let's plot this again. These two right here, we're gonna have cone displacement and vent velocity. So we got cone displacement. Well, this is telling you right here that at 400 hertz, I'm throwing the cone away. The cone is puking its guts out. So that's one thing you have to consider when, when building a box like this. Even the seal, which is the yellow one, chucks his cone at roughly 40 hertz. Nonetheless, and that's not okay. So that means we're overpowering that driver, or maybe we need to use a subsonic filter, infrasonic filter, whatever you want to call it. So let's knock this thing back down to 300 watts. So since I took it down to 300 watts, now we can see that I am not pushing that woofer past its linear excursion anymore, and I am safe on everything down to about 30 hertz, which is still not great. We don't want to do that. Um, both band passes are still throwing the cone. That's not acceptable in my opinion, but it is what it is. This is once again, just for uh, demonstration purposes. So I got band velocity. Obviously there will be no yellow graph. There is no port. We have nothing to worry about. Uh, these are all fine. But if I push it back to 400 hertz, So this is the second port of the sixth order enclosure. And if you see it here, we're now getting port noise. Port noise is unacceptable in my opinion. Nobody wants to hear that. You put it in a trunk, you can't hear it, but you want to keep that vent velocity pretty low. Actually, the in this case, the fourth order is actually doing the best. So right now I'm going to close out the two port or band pass boxes so I can really show you the difference between these two. So let's take a look at this again. This is the ones we most people are interested in, which is sealed and ported. So we're going to say 80 hertz, which is probably most people's crossover point. 180 hertz is you know, your, your uh, low pass crossover point, and then down to 30. Very little music plays 20. Yeah, this thing does pretty good, plays pretty low. If you look really close, there's a huge gain. I mean, it's just a massive gain here. So if you're a fan of sealed enclosures, which many people are, I don't mind them. Uh, but here's the catch. So if you're doing a ported box and you're doing one woofer, you're going to get roughly 6 dB more on this particular setup at 40 hertz. 6 dB more is like adding two more woofers and, and more power. So at that point, what's the cost worth to you? You're going to lose that much more space. So yes, this box is 2.695 cubic feet. You're like, wow, that's twice as big. I don't want to lose that much space. Well, if you want to get as much base as you want in a sealed box, you're going to get a porter ported at 40 hertz. You'd have to add two more woofers, way more power. And at that point, now you're at what? Four cubic feet of lost space. So there are major advantages to doing a ported enclosure with sealed. Uh, but that's not always the case. I did a Dodge truck. We ended up doing four 12s behind the back seats uh, in a sealed. And it, man, this sounded incredible. I don't think I would have got that same sound out of even two ported. Actually, I've done it with two ported too. And honestly, the seal box was was the right decision for that vehicle. So it's, it's on a case by case basis. If you have a large trunk, you go with ported. It makes more sense. As long as it's tuned properly, set properly, your woofers will last you forever. So that's a quick look on the analytical side or a visual side, if you will, 
uh, what the differences are between sealed, ported, and bed pass enclosures. If you have any more questions, feel free to call any of our four stores. Uh, like us on Facebook, like us on YouTube, and have a great day.